grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Well, welcome to this service of St. Peter's Anglican Church in Cremorne, where I'm Tim St. Quinton and I serve here as the rector. Today is Trinity Sunday, the day where we particularly remember that the God whom we worship has revealed himself to us as a triune God, that is one God in three persons. I say we particularly remind ourselves today because in a sense, every Sunday is Trinity Sunday. Every Sunday is we worship one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity. We might shy away from the idea of Trinity because it's difficult for us to comprehend. But if God was fully comprehensible to us, he couldn't be an infinite, all-knowing, all-powerful and all-loving God. He would be a very tame God indeed. But that's not to say that we can't know God at all, for he has revealed himself to us as Father, Son and Holy Spirit and revealed his character as just and loving and merciful. As we hear of deadly viruses and civil unrest and economic hardship, it's comforting to know that we have a sovereign and loving Father who has entrusted all authority to the Son, who is at work in the world by the Holy Spirit, working in and through the church to bring about his good purposes. God said, proclaim the name, the Lord, the Lord, a God who is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Oh, 
Well, God revealed himself to Moses on Mount Sinai as the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, who is slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin. Therefore, knowing the character of God, the Bible tells us we can approach God confidently through our Lord Jesus Christ. As we do so, we must confess our sins seeking forgiveness through God's boundless goodness and mercy. So that's, let's do that as we pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have gone our own way, not loving you as we should, nor loving others as much as ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. Only you can save us. Father, forgive us. Help us to love you and all people and to live for your honour and glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, God desires that none should perish, but that all should turn to Christ and live. In response to his call, we acknowledge our sins. God pardons those who humbly repent and truly believe the gospel. Therefore, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, with joy, we can proclaim together glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And our prayer for Trinity Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us, your servants, grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and evermore defend us from all adversities for you live and reign one God forever and ever. Amen. And Heavenly Father, as we come to the ministry of your word, we bow in your presence. May your word be our rule, your spirit our teacher, and your greater glory our supreme concern. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Chisel out two stone tablets like the first ones, and I will write on them the words that were on the first tablets which you broke. Be ready in the morning, and then come up on Mount Sinai. Present yourself to me there on top of the mountain. No one is to come with you or be seen anywhere on the mountain. Not even the flocks and herds may graze in front of the mountain. So Moses chiseled out two stone tablets like the first one and went up Mount Sinai early in the morning, as the Lord had commanded him, and he carried the two stone tablets in his hands. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and stood there with him and proclaimed his name, the Lord. And he passed in front of Moses, proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation. Moses 
bowed to the ground at once and worshipped. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Well, I invite you now to pause the video uh, and to read through the other readings, either in the service sheet or, or in a Bible. Uh, the first reading uh, from the Psalms is Psalm 8, which is uh, a wonderful psalm that celebrates the majesty of God in creation and marvels at his concern for us. Uh, the New Testament reading is from the very end of 2 Corinthians chapter 13. It's a very brief reading at the close of the letter but it includes that great Trinitarian blessing that many of us would know as the grace. Do pause and read those readings now. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, and some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, how much does the Trinity matter to you? If you found out tomorrow that God is actually one person instead of three, uh, would your relationship with God feel any different? Would it require a drastic overhaul in the way you think or speak about your faith or pray? How much does the Trinity matter to you personally? Well, judging by the church's historic creeds, uh, Christians used to think the Trinity was really important. I wonder if that's still the case. I suspect that many of us have a formal belief in the Trinity, but perhaps lack an understanding in a real sense of why it matters so much. Well, the Trinity matters because God matters. The doctrine of the Trinity is the Christian doctrine of God. It answers the question, who is God? And as those whose hope is to enjoy eternity in his loving presence and in whom our souls delight, knowing God as Trinity is, I suspect, even more important to our faith than knowing who my wife is, is important to my marriage. The Trinity matters because this is who God is. It's who he always was and who he would have been even if there had been no you or me and no heaven and earth. God's way of being God is to be Father, Son, and Holy Spirit simultaneously from all eternity, perfectly complete in a triune fellowship of love. And so the Trinity matters because God matters to us. The Trinity also matters because of what God has done for us. The Trinity is at the very heart of what God has done, the good news of the gospel, because God is at the heart of the gospel. And, and one scholar has suggested that this is also the best way for us to try to understand the Trinity, not in an abstraction, but on the basis of what God has done. The key to understanding the Trinity is to associate God with the gospel that it's the Father who sends the Son and the Holy Spirit to save a fallen humanity. In this, we know that God is Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The God we proclaim is the God of Jesus, who has eternally loved his Son. And this eternal Son is filled with the very life and love of God, the eternal Spirit. 
the Father sends the Son to join the children of Adam in his incarnation as he becomes one of us. And through his cross, he reconciles hell-bound sinners to his Father. He rises again to new life and all who receive him in repentance and faith become children in the same family. We get his father as our adoptive father and his spirit is sent as our indwelling spirit. This is the good news. This is the gospel and it is irreducibly Trinitarian. As another writer has said, the Trinity and the gospel have the same shape. Do you see why? This is how God saves us, by sending his son and the father and the son sending the spirit. Our salvation hangs on these two sendings. Without them, God would still be a father. He would still have a son, but he wouldn't be our father and he wouldn't have many daughters and sons. The Trinity matters because the gospel matters. And so here is the true joy of understanding the Trinity as we draw together the idea of who God is and what he's done for us. Uh, In our gospel reading today, we hear the call to the church to proclaim the gospel that all may come to worship Christ. Consider the first part of Jesus' call to go. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus called to baptize disciples in the name of the Father and the Son and the Spirit, note, into one name, not into three names of the Father, Son and Spirit. But Jesus' call to baptize them wasn't primarily a formula of words to say in a baptism service in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Although indeed we do use them that way. Jesus' call wasn't primarily even a call to baptise them into a faith of a God who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. But as a name can represent the entire being of a person, to be baptised into the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit is to acknowledge that disciples, followers of Christ who've submitted their lives to him Share in the fellowship of the triune God himself, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. The gospel, you see, is not just about receiving forgiveness of sins or escape from hell or personal wholeness. It's about receiving God himself. The Father's Son, filled with the Spirit, is given to you. In receiving him, you are owned by the Son, filled with the Spirit, and brought to the Father to share in their love forever. God didn't create us because he needed somebody to love. He wasn't without family. He was already a father, and he already had an eternally begotten and beloved son in the unity of the Holy Spirit. You and I aren't the result of some human-shaped hole in the Father's heart. Rather, we represent the overflow of the Father's eternal love for his Son. God created us, humans, in his image, that we might see and experience and be drawn into the eternal love within the Trinity, to share in the eternal love of the Father for the Son with the Spirit. We get to share in the very love of God himself. And that's something truly to delight in. Amen.
saints adore you, casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea. Cherubim and seraphim falling down before you, God everlasting through eternity. Sinful human eye, your glory may not see. You alone are holy, there is none beside you. Perfect in power, in love and purity. Take some time now to pause the video and to read aloud the Athanasian Creed as the Creed for Trinity Sunday. Uh, this Creed, the Creed of St. Athanasius, uh, along with the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed, is one of the three ancient creeds affirmed by the Anglican Church and indeed many other churches as well. Uh, it goes to great pains, as you'll see, to articulate the doctrine of the Trinity and both the divinity and humanity of Jesus. Uh, it's known as the Athanasian Creed because for centuries people attributed it to Athanasius, a great champion of Trinitarian orthodoxy. Uh, during the crisis of heresy against uh, Arian and others of the like uh, early in the fourth century. You'll find a modernised version of the Athanasian Creed at the end of the service sheet which some may find a little easier to follow. And now do continue on in a time of prayer. Again, you'll find some prayers and prayer points in the service sheet to guide you. And this week, we're encouraging the fam families with children to use prayer cards uh, like this, these ones. Uh, there's a, a link in the service sheets and the video notes to find out where you can download them from. Uh, and our ministry assistant, Makito, has prepared a short video explaining for families one of the different attributes included, uh, the attributes of God included on the prayer cards. Then once you've spent that time in prayer, play the video again and we'll conclude together with the Lord's Prayer. Let's join together in the prayer in which Christ taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. God, the Holy Trinity, Make you strong in faith and love and defend you on every side and guide you in all truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God. 
God above, you heavenly host. Praise Father, Son.